like a brand new pair of jeans I feel like taking chances I feel a lot like 17 Like when I close my eyes Young John Cusack Like making big mistakes I feel like for the first time In a long time I am not afraid I feel like a kid Never thought It'd feel like this Like when I close my eyes Good afternoon. 
I would like to welcome all of you here this afternoon for the wedding of Cynthia Akagbosu and Nathan Swire. My dear friends, life is a stage, and Cynthia and Nathan have come to a stage in their lives, a stage of relationship, a stage of getting together as husband and wife. We are here today to celebrate this special occasion. And so to begin our celebration, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, before we begin our celebration, let us recall to mind our offenses and ask Almighty God to forgive us. You were sent to hear the contract of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on this your servant, Cynthia and Nathan, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We are now going to have the first reading. First reading. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, in trusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. She puts her hands to the disciple, and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor. She extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive, beauty flattened. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the rewards of her labors and let her works praise her to the city gates. The word of the Lord. As be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, 
upon those who hope for his kindness. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. A soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice, in his holy name we trust. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our trust in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. But I shall show you a more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but I do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I, again, nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous, is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. 
My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, I strongly believe that uh, every one of us present here this afternoon cherishes his or her name. I'm sure you do love your name. And I just want to get uh, validation from you whether you do appreciate your name. If you do, could you raise your hand? Beautiful. Thank you. Yes, we love our names. And if you look at it, why is it that we receive names? A name gives us an identity. When you have a name, we are able to identify you. We are able to say that this is John, this is Peter, this is James, this is Mary, this is Agnes, and so on. And so we do love our names. My homily this afternoon is going to be love your name. Love your name. When I perform weddings, I have a tendency of creating names for the couple. And so today, I'm going to create a new name for Cynthia and Nathan. It's going to be a special name for them. And I'm going to take the first letter of each of their name to create this particular name. I'm going to take the first letter C from Cynthia, and I will also take the letter A from her last name, that is Akagbosu. And then I will also take the first letter of Nathan, and also the first letter of his last name, Swire. So let's uh, go for Cynthia first. So for Cynthia, we have C. Akagbosu, we have A. Nathan, we have N. And then Swire, we have S. So the new name is going to come from C-A-N-S. And so their new name is Can Save. Can Save. So you are going to be Can Save Couple. And if you look at it, yes, your goal is to make sure that your marriage is saved, is survived. Let me just use survive would be much better than save. Okay? We want your marriage to survive. So I'm asking both of you this afternoon, if you want your marriage to survive, I would like you to say yes. Okay, wonderful. So if you want your marriage to survive, yes, you have to make it a can. You say, can survive marriage. So you are the can survive couple. <laughs> so we are going to be calling you now can survive couple. Okay, that is your new name. <laughs> Now I'm going to take uh, the, each letter of the new name to demonstrate that you know, their marriage will survive. C stands for can. And talking about can reminds me about uh, 
our former president of United States, Obama. You remember when Obama launched his presidential campaign, his slogan was, we can. We can, that was the slogan of his campaign. And that slogan was very powerful, very psychological, very energetic. Because of that slogan, he was able to touch the hearts and minds of many Americans. And he was able to bring change to the United States. So, Cynthia and Nathan, this should also be the slogan of your marriage. Yes, we can. <laughs> you can, my dear friends, my dear Nathan and uh, Cynthia, when you are able to develop your relationship. Both of you have entered into a special relationship today. And I believe that you can develop that relationship. And when you develop that relationship, there's going to be what I would call a chemistry. A chemistry of relationship will make your marriage to be authentic. We make your marriage to be successful. You also have to have what I would call DNA of relationship. Yes, we have our own different DNA, but there is a DNA of relationship. When both of you are able to have certain values that are important you know, to marriage life, and you try to implement the DNA in your relationship. And so, yes, I believe that you can have a deep, strong relationship. Yes, I also believe that you can if you are able to reach out to one another and make sure that you understand one another. Understanding one another means you are able to know where your partner is coming from. When somebody is um, talking to you, you try to go under, you try to understand the message that this person is trying to convey to you. The same thing about people's feeling. And so it is important for you to understand one another, and I believe you can. Like for instance, you look at your partner, maybe your partner is not really looking, feeling good today. There's something going on. And you are able to ask your partner what is happening. And eventually you're able to figure it out, what is going on with your partner. Yes, there has to be a sense of understanding. And I believe that you know you can understand one another. Yes, you can because you are able to provide something special to one another. If you are able to give some special gift to one another, it could be something small, it doesn't matter, but you are able to provide that kind of you know, gift to one another, and it demonstrates that you care for one another. Yes, I also believe that you can develop a positive relationship and you should be able to stay positive in your family life. 
You should be able to emphasize, you know, positive attitude towards one another. If you think positively in your relationship, your marriage is going to be positive. But if you think negatively, it's going to bring a lot of negative accommodations, negative attitude towards one another. So try to stay positive, and I believe that you know you can. Now going to the letter A from your new name. The letter A stands for A, B, C. A, B, C. There's what we call the ABC of marriage. Quite a good number of us were educated, and at the time you went to school, or even before you went to school at home, your parents were able to teach you the ABC. And if it is in, in the school that you learn it, you learn that ABC, and it's very fundamental to education. You got to know your ABC in order to have education. And so there's also the ABC of marriage. A stands for acceptance. A stands for acceptance. Cynthia and Nathan, you should try to accept each other. If you look at it, you know, we are human beings, we are very unique. Each and every one of us, we are different. But you know what? If you want to have a good relationship, be ready to accept one another. Be ready to accept even people's differences. We have to create room for differences. And even sometimes we enjoy those differences. Like here in the United States, we have a lot of cultural differences. And if you look at it, you know, culture is a way of life. It comprises of so many things. But I just want to talk about one. We have all kinds of cultural food here in the United States. And we try as much as we can to enjoy all those kind of food we have here in the United States. I mean, like me, I love Nigerian food, but uh, I do love, like, you know, Hispanic food or, or Filipino food and so on. I want to eat something different sometimes, all right? So I have to accept those cultural differences that I appreciate in my own environment. The same thing. There are going to be some differences between two of you. So be able to be open to those differences. Be able to accept those differences. Be able to enjoy those differences. So do the best you can to accept one another. The letter B means begin a new day. Begin a new day. There is no doubt in marriage, there are ups and downs, there are challenges, there are problems in marriage life. And you have to try to address those problems and issues that you have in your marriage life. And so you have to find solutions, you know, to your problems. I will just, you know, compare the problem you have to your bedtime. Let's say when you come back from work or from other activities, you want to go to sleep, of course you remove your dress and put it in the closet, all right? As you are putting your clothes in a closet, just think about the problem that you are having. And as you are hanging that clothes, 
also hang your problem in a closet. It is very symbolic. It means that, you know, before you go to bed, if there's any issue, any problem between both of you, talk about it. Deal with it. Find solution to it before you go to sleep. Don't go to bed or sleep with your problem. Find solution to it. So that when you start another day, you're going to begin a new day. You'll be able to say to each other in the morning, hey, good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Nathan. You see some folks, sometimes they get up in the morning, they don't want to say hello, all right? Because they have some problems, all right? So please try to deal and address your problems before you go to bed. The letter C stands for caring. You have to care for each other. You have to be there for each other. You have to find time to be present to one another. I remember I had an interview with both of you, and you talk about, you know, how you're going to put your marriage first, all right? Of course, you have a job to do, but you said that, you know, you don't want your job to get in, you know, in the way of your relationship, of your marriage. So be able to care for each other and be present to each other and spend time together and do things, you know, together. Sometimes when people get into marriage, they think about what is it that I can get from this marriage? What is it that I can get from my husband? What is it that I can get from my wife? Okay, but you know what? If you want your marriage to be successful, think about what can I put into a marriage relationship so that it will work, it will be successful. It is not just what you are good to get out of it. Think about what can I put in? What kind of contributions am I going to make? How am I going to work with my husband or my wife so that you no know, a marriage will be successful? To think about how can, what am I going to put in so that my husband will be happy, so that my wife will be happy. So it is important that you care for each other. The other thing too, you should care about God. We have to bring God into our relationship. And because you care about God, try to pray together. Try to also share your faith with your children. We are praying that you're going to have children, all right? That you'll be able also to share your faith, you know, with your children. Yes, if you have God first in your relationship, a lot of things will go well. And that is why Christ says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all other things will be given to you. When you put God at the center of your relationship, all other things will go well. When we talk about caring, it means also that you'll be able to demonstrate your love for one another. That is very vital. Be able to demonstrate your love for one another. In the second reading of today, St. Paul tells us that Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, he says, Love never fails. Love never fails. Love wins all the time. So it is important that both of you should demonstrate that love for one another and you are going to win in your relationship. Nathan, for a woman 
Love is expressive. <laughs> and so you should try to express your love, you know, for Cynthia. You should be able to be saying to Cynthia, I love you. That statement is very powerful. And Cynthia, when Nathan says, I love you, you can also say back to him, I love you too. So you should be able to demonstrate that love for one another in your relationship. Talking about love, I remember a couple who were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. And uh, during the reception, when they were toasting the glass of wine, the wife said to the husband, Honey, do you love me? And the husband was kind of surprised. Me for the past 25 years, what have I been doing? <laughs> you asking me at this time, do you love me? And then eventually the husband said, uh, yeah, yeah, I love you. And then the wife asked him again, all right, if you love me, would you die for me? Oh, the husband said, no way, am I going to die for you? <laughs> die for you? <laughs> So the husband eventually regrouped and thought about it. And then this is how the husband responded. I have undying love for you. I have undying love for you. Yeah, Nathan, that is the kind of love you should have for Cynthia, a love that is undying a love that is authentic, a love that is lasting. And it's the same type of love, Cynthia, you should have for Nathan. Be able to love one another, and if you do, your marriage is going to survive, it is going to be successful. The last letter, that is S, from your new name, stands for survive. I'm sure that you want your marriage you know, to survive. And if you want your marriage to survive, be ready to implement the principles of successful marriage. There are quite a good number of them I've mentioned in my homily. But try as much as you can to maintain the principles of marriage life. I just want to highlight a couple of them. One is the principle of communication. It was talked about last night. I both of you should try to communicate with each other. Communicate about everything, all right? It could be your concern, it could be your fears, it could be your dreams, it can, you know, have issues that you got from work, about your family, about your children, about education, about your bills. Communicate, put everything on the table, all right? And try to deal with them. Yes, there is also the principle of flexibility, being able to be flexible. From my own observance, both of you are quite flexible. You are able to reach out to one another. You are able to maintain a sense of give and take. And I encourage you to continue with that sense of flexibility, being able to make allowance for each other. Another principle of successful marriage is forgiveness. Nobody is perfect, I am not perfect, and nobody is perfect. So when we make mistake or we do something that is not okay, we should be able to acknowledge it and say, yeah, I did wrong here. I'm ready to apologize. 
apologize to each other. So my dear friends, we thank God today that both of you have come forward to start a life of togetherness. And it is our prayers that you will have a successful life. It is our prayers during this celebration that you know you can survive your marriage life. It is our prayers that your new name will be able to guide you in your relationship. We just want to appreciate all of you who have come here this afternoon for this wedding. There are quite a good number of you who have been married for many years, and you do have experiences of marriage life. You have great ideas of marriage life. And we will appreciate you sharing some of those ideas and experiences with Cynthia and with Nathan. And we also would like you to pray for them so that their marriage will be successful, so that their marriage will be fruitful. Amen? In addition to my homily, we are going to have a special blessing for Nathan and Cynthia. Uh, this is a Jewish blessing. We are having a mixed marriage you know, today, so we try to incorporate, to integrate some of the Jewish symbols into this wedding. So I'm going to say that special prayers. There are seven blessings, Jewish blessings. So I'm going to uh, say those prayers you know, for both of them. Uh, before we had this wedding, they also signed a contract. It's also a Jewish uh, wedding tradition. And in that uh, contract, Nathan is promising that he's going to take care of Cynthia. Okay? Cynthia, you are good hands. Nathan will be able to take good care of you. And then uh, at the reception, there's going to be the breaking of the glass. I don't want to talk about the significance here. When we get to the reception, they will explain it you know, to you. It's also very important in Jewish wedding. So at this time, I'm going to bring my book. Can I get my book? The, the book, there's a book there, the flyer, like a flyer. That one, that one, that one. That one. Just one page. So at this time, I would like uh, the rest of us to raise our hands in blessing over Nathan and Cynthia. This is the Jewish blessing. Blessed are you, Adochi, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the first fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our Father, ruler of the universe, who has created everything for your glory. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of human beings. Blessed are you, Adonai, our ruler and our God of the universe, who has fashioned human beings in your own image according to your likeness and has fashioned it as a lasting mode. Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of the human race. Bring intense joy and exhortation through the ingathering of our children. Blessed are you, Adochai, and the one who gladdens Zion through her children's return. 
gladdening the beloved companions as you gathered your creatures in the Garden of Eden. Blessed are you, Adochai, who gladdens this couple, Cynthia and Nathan. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who created joy and gladness, loving couples, myth, glad song, pleasure, delight, love, loving communities, peace, and companionship. Adonai, our God, let us soon be heard in the city of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem the sound of joy, the sound of gladness. The voice of the loving couples, the sound of their jubilance from the canopies of the youth and from their song-filled face. Blessed are you who cause the couples to rejoice one with the other. We ask for this in your mighty name. Amen. Okay, we are now going to have the rite of marriage. And at this time, I will invite uh, Cynthia and Nathan to come forward. We are also inviting the bridesmaids and the grooms to come forward. Dearly beloved, Cynthia and Nathan, You've come together in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses this love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens you and those who have already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of marriage life. And so in the presence of the church and everybody here, I ask you to state your intention. Cynthia and Nathan, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Oh, I have. I have. Okay. Cynthia and Nathan, are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other? As long as both of you shall live? I am. I am. You see, Cynthia and Nathan, are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. I am. Dearly beloved, you have come together before the church and the ministry. And the minister of the church to take your vows. And since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Nathan. I, Nathan. Take you, Cynthia. Take you, Cynthia. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Okay. I, Cynthia. I, Cynthia. 
Take you, Nathan. Take you, Nathan. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I'm now going to receive their consent. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless you in Christ. And bless the consent which you have declared before the church and God's people, so that what God has joined together let no one put asunder. Okay. And I'm married. We are going to bless your rings. Almighty God, we are that you sanctify your servants and bless these your rings. And let these rings be a sign of their faithfulness remind them of their love for one another. Cynthia. Cynthia. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity and fidelity and as a sign and as a sign to share to share the remainder of my life the remainder of my life with you with you in the name of the father in the name of the father and of the son and of the son and of the holy spirit and of the holy spirit amen amen nathan nathan take this ring take this ring as a sign of my love as a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. And as a sign. And as a sign. To share. To share. The remainder of my life. The remainder of my life. With you. With you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us give them a round of applause. They are married. Hold on, hold on. Well, for one thing, um, when uh, Nathan and, uh, and Cynthia, they were dating, and it came to a point whereby they were going to engage, Nathan had you know, the engaging the engagement uh, ring in his pocket for almost more than a, a whole month. <laughs> and it was burning a hole in his pocket. He was looking for the opportunity, all right, to propose, you know, to her. So eventually they came to a garden and um, the friend of uh, Cynthia was secretly taking photograph, all right? And then before even Nathan got on his knee to propose to, you know, to her, Cynthia just say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't even wait, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, well, it, it, you know, it all became history. Right, so I'm glad that you know, you've been able to come to that day now. Eventually, we are now cementing that relationship. And so to be able to demonstrate that sense of love for one another, I want you now to give a special, Nathan, give a special kiss you know, to Nathan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> 
Congratulations, Cynthia. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, let us last time, we're going to have the prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this newly married family with our prayers. Let us pray for Cynthia and Nathan that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Cynthia and Nathan, and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who are present in our midst, Cynthia and Nathan seal their union, and we pray that you accept their prayers and fill them with your Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I would like to offer us to bring the bread and wine from the back. When love is found and hope comes home, sing and be glad that to are one. When love explodes and fills the sky, praise God and share our Maker's joy. When love has flood in trust and care, build both each day that love may dare. Beyond home's warmth and light To serve and strive for truth and bright When love is tried as loved ones change Hold still to hope though all seems strange Returns and love grows wise through listening ears and opened eyes. When love is torn and trust betrayed, pray strength to love till torments fade, till lovers keep. Score of wrong, but here through pain, love's Easter song. Pray 
Praise God for love, praise God for life, in age or youth, in husband, wife. Lift up your hearts, let love be fed through death and life in broken Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Lord Jesus, who is present in our midst, and as you say, oh, Cynthia and Nathan, in their union, Accept our prayers and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We are this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you willed that the human race created by the gifts of your goodness should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife, you might bestow a true image of your love. For those you created out of charity, you call to the law of charity throughout the world and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so the sacrament of holy matrimony, as the abandoned sign of your own love, consecrates the love of man and woman. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom the angels and his saints and all the principalities of heaven sing to the hymn of your glory as we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us in song proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis the first our Pope, Michael, our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our spouse and Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us now stand and pray to God our Father, as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thank you, O God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share the sign of Christ's peace. Uh, let us share shalom also to one another. If you want to shake hand or give a hug to somebody and say, peace be with you. On your stay, Tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata We're going to give a, a special blessing to Cynthia and uh, Dayton. Again, I would like you to raise your hands in blessing over them. Let us pray. O Lord, be attentive to our prayers, and in your kindness uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Holy Father, the whole world who created man and woman in your own image 
and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for this, your servants, Cynthia and Nathan, who are joined together in marriage covenant. May your abundant blessings, O Lord, come down upon your bride, Cynthia, and also upon the groom, Nathan. that they will be companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may be known for the integrity of their conduct. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence and assist them in their toys. I know that you are near to comfort them in their need, and after a happy old age, together with the circle of their children and friends that surround them, they may come to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word in my soul. It is time for Holy Communion, and those who are Catholics and you are in the state of grace, you can come forward to receive Holy Communion. For those who are not Catholics, you can still come forward and you put your hands across your chest so that I can also give you a blessing. power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompanying your loving favor, what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those especially Cynthia and Nathan, whom you have joined in this holy union. We ask this through Christ our Lord. One more time, we raise our hands in blessing over the couple. And our response at the end of the prayer is amen. 
Cynthia and Nathan. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and bind always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children and have solace in your friends and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in this world to God's charity so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully in the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I just want to thank all of you who have come to grace this occasion. We thank you for all your support, for all your prayers. And we ask you that you continue to pray and reach out to Cynthia and uh, Nathan as they are going to live their life of togetherness. And I pray that Almighty God will be with you as we're going to continue with the celebration of this uh, marriage and that eventually God will bring you safely to your family and to your homes. Amen? Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. you. I just want to present to you a, a newly married couple on behalf of uh, our community here in Oakland the Cathedral Church, I would like to present to you a newly married couple, Dr. Cynthia Akagusu and Nathan Swire. Let's give them a round of applause.
Thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you very much, Jesse. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
baby Who's supposed to live like family? Hey, I know the lie, know the lie. There's nothing stopping me She the feel my swag and I get money I done try my best to be somebody Girls! I'm living life This girl they make me higher, higher I done feel this baby You know go believe this girl not die Right now, we are going to invite Emily Phillips and Aaron Smith. Hype them up, hype them up. Hey, 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 hey. Now invite me, Sarah Seng and Chris Carothers. We are about to invite Dr. Natasha Malkani and Mike Niemek. Hey! Energy! Opa Gangnam Style Now we're about to invite the maid of honor. You're already clapping, you're already clapping, you're already clapping. Caroline Word. Let's go. Okay, round of applause for them, round of applause, and they're beautiful. Dr. Cynthia and Mr. Nathan. I don't see anybody floating. Hey! Money follow you. Oh, oh. Banana follow you. Brother follow you. Cause I'm in love with you. Money follow you. Banana follow you. Papa Razi follow you. Cause I'm in love with you. Are you done talking? Are you done talking? Are you done talking? Tell me, baby, are you done talking? Tell me, baby, are you done talking? I see you floating. Tell me, baby, are you done talking? Are you done talking? Tell me, baby, are you done talking? I don't wanna be a player no more. Yeah, I don't wanna be a player no more. Let's go. I'm in love 
up if you will Money fall on you Banana fall on you Paparazzi follow you Cause I'm in love with yeah. you If I offend you If I offend you Because I'm in your baby If I talk then go say I did talk hey, hey. Tell me why then they use Panadol for our head yeah. How I go talk if my baby no talk They want to spoil our market yeah. I don't wanna be a player no more Let's go yeah. I don't wanna be a player no more Different, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want to promote our culture. We've been able to complete the Christian aspect of our celebration, and also we're going to combine the celebration of the two cultures. Let us bow our heads and pray. O oh, Almighty God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all nations, of all peoples. O oh God, we thank you that by your providence, you've been able to bring your son and your daughter together. We thank you, Almighty God, that you've been able to help them to establish a very special union, the union of husband and wife. O oh God, we commend our bride and the groom, Cynthia and Nathan, into your hands. Father, we thank you that they've been able to enter this union, and we pray that this union to bring success to them, that they be able to have peace, that they be able to deepen their love for one another. Father, we pray that um, their family relationship will be a bright one. We pray that their future will be promising. Father, we pray that any time they put their hands in any situation or work, that uh, good things will come out of it. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you bless them with children, you bless them with good health. Lord God, we've come this evening to celebrate their marriage, their coming together as husband and wife. And Father, we pray that all the things we're going to do here this evening will be able to do it for your own glory. We are that you send your blessing upon the MC of this occasion so that we be able to direct all the different activities we're going to have tonight. Father, we pray that you be able to bless the food that we are going to eat, let it be a source of nourishment to us. We pray that you be able to drink and we don't get drunk. <laughs> we pray, oh Lord God, that um, we're going to have fun, we're going to have a great time. Many of us have put on our dancing shoes, but we pray that we be able, be able to dance and not break our legs. <laughs> Father, we pray that you be able to bless our time together. And um, 
as we continue with our celebration, let us be able to have fun. Let us be able to have good times, all for your own glory. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Round of applause for them. Round of applause. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Are you good? <laughs> so I'm Peter. I'm Nathan's dad. And I'm so very happy with the way that our two families have come together in the past two days to share our traditions and our love. So it's just been great to have everybody. We welcome Cynthia into our family. And it's been wonderful. Yes? So it's fantastic. And it's been wonderful how Nathan has been welcomed into Cynthia's family and, and the whole group here tonight. So last night, Cynthia's father, Fidelis, encouraged Cynthia and Nathan to be in touch with their inner child. I felt that I saw that inner child in the best way during a moment last night. So among many highlights of this weekend, and it's been a, just a fantastic festival of, of great moments, think of the moment last night when Cynthia entered the room in her golden dress, with Nathan dressed like a prince at, his, at her side. Right, you can picture that when she was coming down. Okay, Nathan had a wonderful smile on his face. And this childlike and pure joy, it reminded me of the best moments from Nathan's childhood. Right, as a father, if you see a joyful smile on your child's face, you're just so happy there's a moment where they can feel like that. And so Nathan, at that moment, stood beside his bride, combining the best of that childlike joy and his adult commitment to be with Cynthia. And it was just a wonderful moment to watch as a parent. So along with this joy and with this love, I, I highlight the devotion to something else, to service that Nathan and Cynthia bring to their marriage as well. So build, building on Father Ray's homily today about can survive, you remember can survive? So I wanna do something else, they can serve as well. They can serve and do service as well. So Nathan showed his devotion to service during the summer after sophomore year in college at Dartmouth, when he decided to join the ROTC. And I asked him then why in particular he decided to join. It's such a commitment to go into the army, especially in a time where you could go into danger. And his answer was simple. Nathan says, I want to serve. And that's what he went to do in his years in the army, including a tour in Afghanistan. So thank you, Nathan, for your service for that. But that same feeling and commitment to service we find with Cynthia, who's now in her medical residency, and she serves and she heals the children in Boston. And Cynthia, thank you for what you're doing there. So together in this weekend, in their life together, this couple has shown us their love, their joy, and that they can serve, as Father Ray says, can s can serve. So on this happy night, let us raise our glasses with a toast to their life together, which in Hebrew we say is l'chaim. So I have to get my glass. Sorry. One, two, three. L'chaim. <laughs> Knowing Cynthia for all these years, I'm very proud to see that Cynthia has finally reached this point where she is finally do something that she absolutely wanted, which is I mean, a marriage. She actually, she always, I always could tell when she was younger that she always wanted to be married someday. I'm very glad that, I'm very glad that I, I had the time to actually come and see her, her marriage. I always known when Cynthia was growing up, when she was she was older, the older me by a little bit, but I always knew when she when she was younger, she was always hardworking, always diligent always trying to do the best she could possibly do. And I'm so glad that she, when she went to college, she finished college, she w went to medical school, she chose to be a doctor just like my dad, and most of my family are doctors. And I'm so glad that she chose to do this, chose this profession, chose something that she was very interested in, and I'm so glad that she's my sister because she's been very supportive of me, and I, oh, I'm always thankful that she's my sister. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Caroline, Cynthia's maid of honor. First, let me start off by saying thank you to all the family and friends who have traveled near and far to celebrate this amazing day and amazing couple. I first met Cynthia at Dartmouth College our freshman year. Cynthia lived in the River Cluster, but would often hang out with her friends, Adrian, Jackie, Jackie, and Kathleen in the McLaughlin dorms where I lived. We became fast friends. 
I met Nathan freshman year too, when we were both interning that summer in DC as part of the Rockefeller Center's first year fellows program. I remember how Nathan's parents so graciously invited the whole cohort, 20 kids, to a barbecue at their house that summer, which was so incredibly thoughtful. After all, we were a bunch of 19 year olds on our own for the first time and eating ramen noodles most nights for dinner. After a summer of working at a real job for the first time, making a whole group of new friends, and even getting to see the fireworks from the Capitol lawn for the 4th of July, we all headed back to Dartmouth for our sophomore years. Little did I realize that Nathan would go on to become one of the most important people in Cynthia's life. Fast forward a few years, and we were all set to graduate from Dartmouth. I'll never forget how much fun Jack Cynthia, Jackie, Adrian, Kathleen, and I had senior week. By now we are all in neighboring sorority houses and we spent our last few days of college soaking in the New Hampshire summer. I was very excited that Cynthia and I both ended up in Boston after college where our friendship truly blossomed. Cynthia was going for a master's at Boston University and I was working outside the city. Throughout the next several years, our friendship continued to develop and we even had a party together for Cynthia's birthday and my moving to San Francisco five years ago. Cynthia is such an amazing friend who is always there for you. She, puts always, she always puts others before herself, and I find it so fitting that she chose to be a pediatrician as she gives back with all her heart. I was overjoyed when I heard that Cynthia and Nathan had reconnected and were so happy. Furthermore, I literally got up from my desk at work and explained to my coworkers, my friend is getting engaged, my friend is getting engaged, when Nathan secretly texted me about their engagement plans a year ago. I kept anxiously awaiting for him to pop the question, and when it finally happened, I couldn't wait for this day. Cynthia, Nathan, you have and always will mean so much to me, and so let's make a toast to the wonderful future you will have together. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm not going to sing this part. Uh, <laughs> I've been going back and forth about what to do for this particular moment. Um, I could tell lurid stories, I could tell happy stories, I could tell sweet, wholesome ones. Uh, but mostly one I want to say is very simple. Um, my brother is one of the best human beings that I have the pleasure of knowing and uh, having grown up with. <laughs> um, who fell in love with and uh, one of the other best human beings who I happen to know and am now related to. I am so grateful um, to be a part of this ceremony, and uh, I love you both so very much. Um, I'm overwhelmed to be welcomed into your family and to welcome you into ours. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> I knew I was gonna run out of words at some point, but mostly all I wanna say is, may you have a happy, long, healthy life with everything that you could possibly want from it. L'chaim. Thank you all, and thank you, Dr. Agabasu, for this beautiful evening tonight. And I also want to thank you and Lillian for raising such an exquisite daughter. Yeah. Okay, 25 years from now, I look forward, Nathan and Cynthia, to celebrating your 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> with all those children that you will be producing and that I will have cared for. Yes, I will, in that back house that you're gonna have for me to take care of those children when we live in DC together, right? We're gonna do that. Nathan and Cynthia, I know, I trust that you will get to 25 years and beyond. I know that you will because you will have followed uh, some of the top five things that I think are important in a marriage. So just to keep this brief, I'm going to tell you, both of you, the top five things. And I think that you have already heard these, but I will just repeat them for you. First of all, number five, love is an active verb. It is not a passive verb. It is even better, to say, even better than to say, I love you, is to say, I am loving you. And show that to each other every day and the little things that you can do for each other. Number four, on top of I am loving you, layer trust 
and respect. And with trust, give each other the benefit of the doubt because I know that you do that and I know that you will. Number three, every single day, I know you will do this, but just reminding you as your mother, <laughs> make time to talk every day about the big things, about the little things, but even more important, listen. Number two, and you heard this last night, always put each other first. Even with the little kiddos running around, those males and females that we know that you will produce, <laughs> always put your, your, each other first. That is the way to keep things happy and keep you loving each other. And number one is the same as number five. Love is an active verb. Not just I love you, but I am loving you. I wish you a happy life together and we'll see you in 25 years or maybe before. Kiss up. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the bride and groom, I am really happy to be here and I congratulate you. And I know my sister abroad is from over there. She's looking at you and she's very happy and very content. I am, a, my name is Professor Felicia A.K. I'm a professor of pediatrics and I've come all the way from Nigeria because <laughs> because she's my special niece. Her mother was my special sister. She was the youngest of us all, so there was a lot of emotion over her demise. But I am happy to be here today, and I am so happy we are moving on. With me here, representing the Acholono family, there are, I believe, around 20, if not more, Acholonos here. A lot have come from Florida, from all over U.S., not just from California. I also want to thank, honestly, a lot of the friends of my sister Lillian. They were so great, so supportive when she died in 2017. They've also come all the way from Florida, both those who are related and those who are just friends. I've met a lot of them here. And I'm so happy, uh, both for Cynthia and Nathan, and as I said, certainly, I know that my sister is looking down with approval. A lot have been said. The priest gave a wonderful talk. I enjoyed, I know most of you enjoyed his talk, and that your name is now Cans. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, indeed. Um, I want to just say that many of us who have been married for years have to say that marriage is not a bed of roses. It is wonderful when it is, but honestly, it is rare for it to be a bed of roses. So I plead with you to make sure that your love, your love conquers everything. Love conquers everything. So no matter what challenges you have, that love will remain. I want you to remember, my dearest niece, that your grand um, mothers, a grandmother and father, lived, my dad lived for 104 years, your grandmother 99. And the picture there is a picture of them celebrating their 75th wedding anniversary. So when you were talking about 25 years to come, I was saying 75 years to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we love you. As I said, all these your relations are here. My, my, all. In fact, the whole family of the Acholonos. There's uh, her mother's uh, uh, three sisters and uh, two brothers. They are all here. Uh, so, uh, they are all here. And um, and um, you know your cousin there who flew all the way from. UK this morning, she's here, 
yeah. And um, you know, my uh, daughter Kechi Ikede, all the Acholonos, wonderful family. So please keep up, keep up the good work. I first met the couple as a couple um, at the Acholonu Day uh, last year. And um, Nathan, I have to congratulate you on your high life dancing. It was lovely. <laughs> I said to myself, this is a great guy. We are gonna be we are gonna love him. We are gonna and you are a wonderful mother, you know, and uh, honestly, the both of you are gonna be a wonderful couple. The Lord God will be with you. Pray to him. Your love will endure, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So um, I'm, a, I'm a law professor, and Nathan is graduating next week from Harvard Law School. Whoa. <laughs> and so what we do in our family for fun is read contracts. Okay. <laughs> No, but, but really, this, this beautiful piece of art here is a contract that Cynthia and Nathan signed today. In, in Hebrew, it's called the Ketubah. It's the contract that the husband and wife signed together. And in, in history, it was a, the binding contract, exactly how it would be. And one nice part of the history is that even 2,000 years ago, it gave the women rights. So if the man wasn't acting correctly, the woman had rights to make sure she would be treated correctly, and so that's 2,000 years of history for the treat the woman right, which is important, so that's good. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do, and I'll, it, it, it takes a minute to read it, but I'll, I'll read you what was signed here. This is not the legally binding version, but it's the version that came from the hearts of Nathan and Cynthia today. So I'm going to sit here and try to read the small print that my eyes can almost see. Okay. So on the outside of it here, so it's in Hebrew and English, on the outside it says, my beloved spoke and said to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. And the voice, I have to turn my body like this, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. So that's the, 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 the sort of verse, I think from the Song of Songs is my guess. I'm not sure. That's so now I'll, I'll read for a minute. Uh, do you want to share in the reading of this or no? No? Okay. But I have my lawyer glasses on, so it's okay. Okay. So here's what it says, and I'll read the English version just for you tonight. On the seventh day of the week, the 20th day of the month of ER, in the year 5,779 in the Jewish calendar, it's been going on for a long time, corresponding to the 25th day of May in the year 2019, here in Oakland, California, in El Cerrito also, the beloved's Nathan Putney Swire, son of Ann Scott Putney, yay, and Peter Swire, that's me, um, and Dr. Cynthia Omoge Akabosu, daughter of Dr. Lillian Akabosu and Dr. Fidelis Akabosu, entered into this mutual covenant as equal partners, loving and supporting companions in life. The rings, they're rings, you have them still? Yes? Okay. <laughs> These rings symbolize our commitment to each other as beloveds and friends before God and these witnesses. We shall treasure and respect each other with honor and integrity as we create a loving future together. May our love provide us with the determination to be ourselves and the courage to pursue our chosen path. With this ceremony, we affirm our intention to provide for each other the protections and privileges of all loving couples. May our lives be intertwined forever and be as one in tenderness and devotion. There's more. As we share life's everyday experiences, we promise to strive for an intimacy that will enable us to express our innermost thoughts and feelings, to be sensitive at all times to each other's needs, to share life's joys, and to comfort each other through life's sorrows, to challenge each other to achieve intellectual and physical fulfillment, as well as spiritual and emotional tranquility. We also promise to establish a home amid the community of Israel and the community of all the families here today because we have so many families and traditions here. Committed to the creation of an all-inclusive society, a loving environment dedicated to peace, hope, and respect for all people, a family filled with love and learning, goodness and generosity, comfort and compassion. We joyfully enter into this covenant 
and solemnly accept its obligations. All this is valid and binding, signed, Nathan and Cynthia. Uh, this is another traditional Jewish ceremony uh, by which the bride and the groom will ceremonially stomp on a glass piece, uh, on a, a wine glass. Um, there's a saying, two Jews, six opinions. Nobody really knows where this tradition comes from. Um, I was just reading up on it and everybody's arguing about it, of course. But I think some of the, the ones that are, uh, are meaningful are in all things uh, you should temper. So with this joyous occasion, it is tempered by the remembrance of the destruction of the Second Temple, which is a solemn occasion. I read another opinion by a different Jew that said uh, <laughs> um, it is to commemorate the moment in that once something has broken, it cannot be put back together. Once you have un uh, undertaken marriage, you cannot undo it. And I choose to think that that's probably what we're going to be uh, using it for tonight. So in that case. oh. And when they do stomp on it, you yell mazel tov, which means congratulations. <laughs>